Kaso Tamak, Etienne Mustas Lafferty, Nitsi Kasson. Uh, my name is Etienne Mustas Lafferty, and I'm the Indigenous Education Coach. And I'm back. Here I am. And I'm with my daughter, Layla. Layla's joining me again today to do some learning about the land. And uh, I'm back, and I'm noticing that there's a lot that has changed since I've been here. And you know, a long time ago, First Nations people knew a lot about the land around them that helped them to survive. So we have to figure out how learning about the land helps us be better people as well. So we have done a bit of a smudge. We offered some tobacco uh, this afternoon and we have some, some food to eat. And uh, we wanna know if you did some learning about the land this month um, during No See To We Peace or September or Breeding Moon, what did you learn? Did you learn anything about our four-legged friends uh, like the elk, the deer or moose or buffalo? Did you do some research on beavers and find out what's happening? What about berries or birds? So I'm interested to find out some of the things you learned and I wanna share some of the things that I've learned um, during this moon. And so this time of year is actually called the rut or rutting season. And that's because a lot of male elk around this time are trying to find girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what they do? Layla and I actually saw some recently at a trip to Jasper and we'll share with you some of those pictures. And uh, what we found out is that elks, actually the males, the men, when they're trying to find their special woman, their special elk, they make a really interesting sound called a bugle or, or bugling. And I'll be sure to share that link with you so you can hear what elk sound like when they make that noise, when they bugle. One other thing that I've been learning about beavers, because you know, last time we talked a lot about beavers and we were showing videos of the beavers. I've been walking around and looking at some of these beaver dams and they look bigger and there is way more beaver activity. The other thing we talked about last time was berries and finding more about berries. So I hope you did some researching about berries. Um, one thing I found out was that the trees with berries on them look very different right now and I'm going to show you some pictures of that. One thing that I learned was that some berries are actual berries and some things have different names. For example, I found out that a tree called the red osier dogwood doesn't actually have berries, they're called droops and I'll show you a video of what that looks like. Some trees have fresh fruit and some actually have berries and something called a palm or a rose hip can be found in these areas too and we've seen rose hips as well. Um, mm. I'm gonna show you a video of a rose hip but first I wanted to just tell you that the rose hips right about now are kind of wrinkly and um, they're starting to dry up. And when you look inside the rose hip, which you'll see, it's all full of seeds. Yeah. First Nations people used to and still do actually make tea out of rose hips. You can boil this and make a really, really yummy tea, but it's not uh, advisable to eat any of the seeds inside. You will not like those. Some of the seeds from or the droops from a dogwood, like I showed you, those are not edible for humans. They're just for our, for our animal friends and our relatives here out in nature. Can I ask a question? What's that? Are we allowed to open these now? You can open them if you want, but I'm gonna show a video of what it looks like. All right. which I'm excited about. I want to share with you some pictures of Key Saskatchewan ECB or the North Saskatchewan River or River Valley. Um, what, what it looked like a month ago and what it looks like right now. So guess what? 
we're entering a new moon and this moon is called Penascowi P. Sim. I'm gonna wait for Layla to be ready. She's gonna try and say it with us. Penasco. Penasco. We. We. P. Sim. P. Sim. Penasco. We. P. Sim. Penasco. We. P. Sim. We'll do it again. Penasco. We. P. Sim. Penasco. We. P. Sim. Good job. And so, you know what that means in English? What that means is. What? Leaves falling moon. So it's basically just describing that all around this time of year, all the leaves are falling off. So that's what we're learning about Panasco V P Sim. And I'm gonna share a little tiny little story about the trees uh, with you during Panasco V P Sim. Long ago, the trees were told they must stay awake seven days and seven nights, but only the cedar, the pine, and the spruce stayed awake until that seventh night. The reward they were given was to always be green, while the other trees must shed their leaves. So, each autumn, the leaves of the sleeping trees fall. They cover the floor of our forests with colors as bright as the flowers that come in the spring. The leaves return the strength of one more year's growth to the earth. So I want you to start noticing which trees had to shed their leaves and which ones get to stay green. Do you see any green trees? During, during this time, I wanted to share with you some of what I've learned that is happening during Penascoe Pisim or this time of year or this moon. And one of the things that I found very interesting was nests. And I'm talking about bird's nests. And because all of those trees gifted the soil with their beautiful leaves, we are then able to see all of the many bird's nests that have been made over the many months. And I want you to pay particular attention to where those nests are and maybe find out more about bird's nests. What I found out was that uh, birds, actually, Layla, did you know this, do not return to the same nest. Why? They, they decide that they want to rebuild. Every time they need a new nest, they go through all the hard work of making nests every single time. So it's not very likely that they will return to the same nest. The other important thing to know about Panasco Wee Pea Simmer, what's happening around this time is that by beginning of November, the bears are really starting to hunker down and get ready to hibernate and they're taking leaves and shrubs and pieces of lichen and they're building their den and getting ready for winter. And that's really interesting. What are ways in which we are getting ready for winter? <laughs> what? And you know what? What? You know what bees are doing? What? Do you think they're getting ready for winter? Yeah. I yeah. Think they're trying to hibernate. Yeah, well, you know what they do? Bees come together, all the female bees, and they form winter clusters. So they find a place and they form winter clusters. And you know, it's a bunch of bees and they all huddle around one single bee. What bee is that? The queen. They all huddle around the queen and they shiver like this and they create a warmth so that the queen will be nice and warm. And so all of those bees are working so hard just to keep that one bee warm all I'm winter. I'm the queen. Also, no see to we pee sim. I'm sure there was a lot of activity around fishing, but this time in, in Penasco we pee sim, some fish are spawning, which means they're leaving little eggs in shallow waters so that they can have babies too. And do you know where fish go in the winter? Where do you think they go? Uh, that's great. That's great. Great guess. They might find a home somewhere, but you know what as the the water freezes mm -hmm. they di they dive deeper and deeper where all the sh the The water is nice and warm down below. So they too like us are trying to hide from all the cold Okay, so now that we've learned a little bit about what's happening here during uh, Penasco we piece I want you to think about what does that mean for you? Does that mean you're gonna go out and hunt animals? or does that mean you're gonna go out and go fishing? Probably not, but we need to understand as humans here what we can learn from the land and what we can learn from these animals.
Here, here's your land-based mission for Penascoe Peasum. I want you to start thinking about a few things. One is bird's nests. What can we learn more about bird's nests and what can we learn about birds and their behavior during this time? So they work so hard to make those nests and they just leave them. And it's okay that they start all over again. They're fine with that. What can we learn about birds? They can, if they, if they, if they accidentally wreck it, they can make another one and it's okay if you make mistakes. You're right, thank you. Hi. I, I also want you to find out more about bears. So they also work too very hard to prepare for winter. What are ways that you prepare for winter? Also, during the winter months, they're alone a lot and they might feel lonely. And what, what can we do when we feel lonely? Um, we, how about, when we feel lonely, we can ask someone to play with us or something. Right. Lastly, what can we learn about bees and how they prepare for winter? I talked about how they cluster all around the queen and they keep that, that queen safe and warm. Who are the people that you want to protect and that you want to keep safe I during wanna, the winter? How, who would you protect? I will protect the very, very old people who own the dead. Okay, so you're saying that you would protect the elderly, like grandmas yeah, and grandpas. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think it's wonderful to protect our elders during this time. Thank you for joining us in our happy place again. And I look forward to hearing more about what you learned about bees and birds and bears. And I also want to see all of your pictures in your own happy places and continue to learn. I look forward to hearing more about this moon. Hi, hi, Nenas, come on. Do you want to say hi, hi? Hi, hi, and I hope you find a really, really good foster for your happy place. Try hard and send us some pictures. Awesome.